Today we're going to look at some other key practicals that are commonly asked in the A-level biology exams. Um, and I'm going to effectively provide you with a list of model responses for these types of questions and techniques that are asked. So I've compiled um, these model answers based on a range of different mark schemes from across lots of different A-level biology exam boards, looking at exam papers from the past sort of 15 to 20 years. Um, so hopefully, you being able to reproduce something similar to this will guarantee you full marks in the exam for these types of questions. Look at the first question. So describe how to produce temporary amounts of tissue. Okay, so if we sort of uncover the answer for this. So starting off, number one is you need to cut a thin slice of tissue out using a scalpel. It's important that you mention scalpel and that it's a thin slice. It needs to be thin so that you can obviously observe using a microphone. Uh, sorry, not microphone, microscope. You then place this thin slice onto a slide and you have to stain it. Now, what you stain it with will depend on what you're investigating. So iodine is often used to investigate starch, but you can also use like nail varnish if you just want to do a simple sort of um, investigation, just looking at that. Um, finally, the third, the third step is to place a drop of water onto the slide. And then the last step is to lower the glass up onto the slide using a mounted needle at a 45 degree angle to cover the slip, right? So why is it important that we mentioned 45 degree angle? Well, by using it at this sort of direction, it will prevent any air bubbles appearing on the sort of uh, glass slide and slip once you produce it, okay? So this sort of answer will hopefully guarantee you full marks. So the next question is to describe how to calculate the mean stomatal length, okay? So this has been asked quite a few times in different exam papers, and it's generally quite a standard answer, and you've got to make sure you mention the equipment specifically. So first of all, you need to calibrate, which is a key skill. So calibrate an IP scratchicle against a stage micrometer to calculate how many divisions on the micrometer equal what on the um, IP scratchicle. So you've got to find out, so this is what calibration is, you've got to find out how many of the different divisions equal what. Then once you've deduced that, within a certain field of view that you're observing, you need to measure each stomata a minimum of three times, I think that's a good number, to sort of then get a mean, but three times to then calculate a mean. Notice that the question says mean stomata length, okay? So you've got the sort of explain how you get a mean. You can't get a mean from just one reading, okay? So three is a good number to go for. And overall, you need to make sure that you measure lots of different um, areas and you take a large number of readings so that it is representative, your results are representative of the main population of cells that you're investigating. Okay, another question is, that a student found that there were five stomata per millimeter square. Describe a student could have estimated the total number of stomata in the lower epidermis of one leaf. So, this is also quite an interesting question, and um, it's quite a simple answer, really. All you've got to do is in order to find out how many stomata there are, is to first of all draw around the stomata on square, sorry, draw around the leaf on a square piece of paper. Once you've sort of done that, you can count the number of squares because you need to get the total area per millimeter squared. Remember, it says a student found that there were five stomata per millimeter squared, so you've got to get to the area of that leaf that you have. The only way to get that is by drawing that around a square piece of paper. As there are five stomata per one millimeter squared, as it says in the question, total area can be calculated by multiplying by five. Now, obviously, the number here um, will depend on whatever context given the question. But the key thing is draw around in a square piece of paper to get the total area and then scale up to then get the total number. Describe an investigation to discover the path of transpiration. So this has been asked, um, I believe, on an OCR paper a while back. Um, it's quite a good question. And it's, again, quite simple. You need to cut the stem of the plant and place it in a coloured dye solution. It's the only way you can discover the path of transpiration. You've got to live it for an allocated amount of time. Ten minutes sounds like a good time to me. Then you're going to cut sections of the stem and observe that with a light microscope. It's important that you mention that you have to cut sections of the stem and that you observe it with the microscope. And then it's important to then state that the path that the dye takes will mirror the path of transpiration, okay? So obviously, as the dye is taken up into the xylem vessels, and we observe that in the light microscope, whatever the path the dye takes, that will be the same as the path of transpiration, okay? 
Another question, scientists use an optical microscope to measure the number of capillaries in thin sections cut from samples of heart muscle. Describe the method they would have used to find the mean number of capillaries per millimeter squared. So this is quite similar to the um, epi the stomata of the leaf question, but um, a bit more difficult because obviously you can't really draw around. You've got to find a different way to get the area. So again, it's just calibrate with an eyepiece reticule against a stage micrometer to calculate, oh, sorry, to calculate how many calculate how many divisions on the stroma micrometer equal to what on the ip scraticule keep doing that then we need to measure the diameter of the field of view okay because we're going to be using um area equals pi r squared we need to make sure that we get the diameter then we calculate the area of the field of view using a equals pi r squared and we count the number of capillaries that we can see in that field of view. And it's nice to state that you pick a randomly selected field of view, again, to be representative. And the importance of the large number, again, is because you want to find the mean. And then once you've sort of got that within the area, you can scale it down to find out how many there are per one millimeter squared, because obviously you'll have a higher number for the area of the field of view. Another thing that is commonly asked is the um, photometer. So this is used to measure the rate of transpiration-ish. Um, it mainly really does the rate of water uptake and you have a look at how far the bubble moves along this capillary tube. So how does a photometer work? Well, the plant shoot is cut under water. Okay, once so you cut in the water, obviously to prevent air coming in and that forms a continuous unbroken water column. Thus, this allows transpiration to occur as water moves up the xylem vessels. Okay, self-explanatory. As a result of transpiration, the air bubble will move along with the capillary tube because of the difference in pressure, it will be dragged along. The faster the bubble moves, the faster the rate of transpiration. And that makes sense. Obviously, the faster the rate of transpiration, i.e. the faster that water moves through the xylem and transpires at the leaf surface, will mean that there's a faster, well, the time in which a pressure difference is created will be faster, therefore the bubble will move along. And as a result of that, you can calculate the rate of water uptake because again, the bubble will be moving and the water will be taken up by the um, shoots and then, you know, into the xylem. How do we calculate water uptake? This is a commonly asked, how do you calculate the rate of water uptake? Well, you've got to consider the units of rate mainly, okay? Um, and well, how do we get rate? Well, the key things we need, we need the distance the bubble moves along the capillary tube. We need the time taken, obviously, because it's rate for the bubble to move and the area of the capillary tube, which can be deduced by area equals pi r squared L. R stands for radius of the capillary tube here. And the L is the distance moved by the bubble. Okay, so A equals pi r squared L is a very important formula for you to remember. The rate of water uptake can be used to sort of equal the rate of transpiration. However, that isn't necessarily um, exactly, it, the rate of water pig does not always equal the rate of transpiration because there will be differences. You won't immediately transpire all the water you take up because some of the water will be reta retained within um, the sort of cells of the plant because um, we use water for photolysis, uh, well, not be sorry, the plants use water for photolysis and photosynthesis and so on. So a lot of the water will be retained within the cells itself so it will not directly equal the rate of transpiration but it will be a good enough estimate common questions that are asked um for pitometers so let's start with number one a pitometer measures the rate of water uptake rather than the rate of transpiration give reasons why the water does not truly measure their transpiration so this is again what we were just talking about so leaf look photosynthesis okay we need water for photo photolysis so obviously it will lower the water potential because water will be used up water is used to provide um sort to make the plant cells more turgid okay so this is just literally listing the roles of water in plants and water producing respiration will flow into the xylem okay remember that at the end of respiration um once oxygen acts as a terminal electron except then it combines with protons it produces water and the water that's producing respiration will actually move into the xylem so that will increase the volume of water within the xylem vessel because it won't exact because more water will be there it won't be the same as the water in, originally put into the pitometer so there'll be more water moving into the xylem describe the student would have returned the air bubble to the start of the period of the investigation okay so how would you reset it you basically just open the tap and you add more water suggest how the reservoir allows repeats to be made so how the structure of it but it's the fact that you can again open the tap 
suggest why we take repeats? Well, this is an obvious answer, so that you can find anomalies and repeat them. You can find out where it could have potentially not had a result that was that typical of the population. Give precautions the students should have taken when setting up the potometer to obtain repeatable measurements of water uptake by the plant shoot. Okay, so this is quite a nice and easy question. So common list is here. Make sure you cut them all underwater, right? Why? So we get continuous broken water column. Make sure you cut it on a slant and keep that consistent. So that way, you know, if you cut them all with a the slant, then you know that you're consistent with that and you don't sort of have all the variables that might compound the results. Seal the joints using wax. Insert the plant shoe into the apparatus sort of underwater. Ensure that no air bubbles present at the start, which is the one obviously needed, and ensure that it's positioned at the start, okay? And make Or make a note of where it was and then sort of look at the difference between that. The more leaves removed from the plant shoot, the slower the rate of water uptake explain why. So this is quite an interesting question. Um, it's quite an application -y question. So there is a positive correlation between the number of leaves that you remove and the rate of water uptake. The more, um, sorry, the more leaves that are removed, the slower the rate of water uptake will be. If you have less leaves, there will be less transpiration at the leaf surface through the stomata, obviously. Less leaves, less stomata, less transpiration. Less leaves, again, means less surface area over which water can be lost, more will be retained. And because of that, more water will be present within the xylem. So the more water, the more leaves are removed, the slower the water will up will be will the slower the water will be taken up into the xylem, because there will be more water already in the xylem. If there's already water in the xylem, how can it take up even more water beyond its capacity? So more water will be retained in the xylem, more water will go into the different cells. Therefore, the more leaves you remove, the slower the rate of water uptake. Okay, thank you very much for watching, and do subscribe.